Ben is with us now. Good morning, Good morning to you. Ellen. I'm you know, sorry to hear about everything that you've you've gone through, um, but you know, well done on the documentary, sort of raising it as an issue. How upsetting has it all been for you when you discovered what was going on? It's it's a real shock, um, and I think one of the reasons that I've wanted to speak about it is to send a message that. Um, you know, you shouldn't feel ashamed or um, embarrassed if something like that happens to you as the as the sort of the person who's had that done to them. Um, it's it's something that we need to be discussing rather than feeling that we should mm. hide away. Mm. Think. Discussing and also sort of trying our best to protect ourselves mm. because I, I, when you first hear the phrase deep fake, I mean, it's a much more common phrase now than than it was just a few years ago. Yeah. Um, it kind of, it's kind of like, well, that, that sounds ridiculous, sort of internet cyber strange thing to have happened, but, but for you it wasn't. How did it come about? How did these people get hold of your pictures and then manage to do what they did with them? So um, it was just um, pictures of my face, um, which I think some had been taken from uh, Facebook pictures, just, just normal photos, like uh, holiday pictures or whatever, um, and, and used. But um, I'm a writer, so if you were to Google me, you could get a picture of my right. face. Yeah. So even if I'd never had a social media account and I'd never mm. shared any pictures um, of my face online, they, they could still have done that. So I think it's really important to move away from thinking about how we can protect ourselves from things like this happening um, and, and think about um, preventing people from doing stuff like that in the first place. Um, because actually, it, it, my example showed, it's very difficult yeah. to... I, I, I wasn't revenge porn, I hadn't shared an intimate image which had then been leaked. This was something that mm. had been made up and, and made from just ordinary uh, pictures. And how common is this then, do you think? Because I, I guess you wouldn't have known about it unless someone had flagged it up mm -hmm. to you. And I believe that some of the pictures of me had been online for quite a long time before I was uh, made aware of them as well. So it's quite insidious and, yeah, quite worrying to think that uh, that could be out there without your knowledge. So, actually, it could be quite widespread, but people just might not know that their photos are being used in this way. Absolutely. And I, I don't want to scare people by saying that because it sounds like quite a frightening thing. Um, but, yeah, it, it had been there without my knowledge for a little while. And so when you when you're, when you're get alerted to this and you find out, and, I mean, you're sort of trying to think, this is ridiculous, I haven't done anything like that, and when you're watching it and then trying to cope with the fallout from that personally, you've got to tell your family, I, you know, you've got to tell the police, you've got to go and try and do it. What was, what was that period like for you, Helen? Um, I, I think the, the, one of the important things about um, the idea of a fake image is that it can be just as distressing to the person. It, you, you know, some of them, I, I was very aware, of course, that the, it wasn't real. Yes. And that this was a made-up image, but the, the images that I saw still had an impact on me. And I started having nightmares, for instance, about some of the violent scenes that were being depicted and also some of the language that was being used um, a, a, about me, which was... Which was about the intention to humiliate um, and other kinds of abusive language. So it doesn't matter if you know a picture is, is, is fake. Uh, it's an image. You still see it. Your brain takes it in in the, the same kind of way. Mm. Um, so it, it, it has that kind of emotional impact on you, whether or not it's, it's real. So I felt very much that it was important that those manipulated images are treated in the same way as other kinds of sure. image abuse and other kinds of intimate image abuse but when you went to the police there were at the time there was nothing they could do absolutely I, mean, I can't imagine you're feeling vulnerable anyway but to realize there's nothing you could do you must have felt so helpless and awful yeah i mean the individual police officers that i spoke to were really supportive and very kind and they listened which was very welcome at that time but yeah it was just this sense that oh this falls through a bit of a loophole there's a bit of a, a hole in the law which means that there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing we can do. Mm. And being told there's nothing that, that we can do leaves you feeling quite stranded yeah. um, and just there with your own feelings about it. It was very lonely. But there's been a change in the law. The online safety bill now means that the non-consensual sharing of intimate deepfake images is now illegal. Mm -hmm. It's a criminal offence punishable by up to two years in jail. So for those people who are in the situation now, it can be helped, but that won't be applied retrospectively. So frustratingly for you, mm -hmm. 
that still can't be used, can it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think it's also important to, to think about the difference between um, being able to, to bring something to, to court, for instance, and getting successful convictions. Um, it, it, it's a, another kind of gap. And I very much think that a change in the law is important because it sends a clear message to people that it's unacceptable mm. uh, to do that to somebody. Um, but it needs to be a shift in the culture around how we consume images um, and how we think about the people behind them mm. in order for there to be a, a kind of meaningful change. It's a conversation yeah. um, which we need to have. Uh, we've seen some um, deep fakes in the past, haven't we? We've mm. spoken to them, but they tend to be more famous people. I think we've got a few that we can show you. This is, this is Morgan Freeman. So um, just to give you an idea about the, the manipulation that can take place. And there's sound and as how well. Realistic Your perception of reality. Yeah. These look. Is we're it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something. So you wouldn't know that that does wasn't. That make it real? I mean, there's something about it that doesn't seem right. This was Barack Obama. Barack Obama. At any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like. I don't know. Killmonger was right. OK, or, uh, so then you can see Barack Obama. Again, you can see it's... I mean, we know these people inside out. And Martin's been used... Our very own Martin Lewis And, and well. we've been used in certain circumstances, but this is a deep fake of Martin being used. And you can see this, again, there's some digital adaptation around his mouth that isn't Martin, because we know him very well. But these are people that are famous. These are people that have a high profile, Helen. The, the, the reality for you is... That, yes, you were a writer, so you had a profile, but you're not well known sort of in these that sort of circles. So there will be people that are just having their their pictures taken mm -hmm. and are being used in this way that it just seems extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing remarkable about about me whatsoever, and I was aware that celebrities have had this happen to them. Um, and in fact. Um, the account that had made the pictures of me also had some celebrities on. But, yeah, they, I'm just a, just a normal person, I suppose. And, and that was... Also, I think we're aware of deep fake in the news because of those kind of examples mm. Mm. like you, you just gave with, with politicians and it being used for scams or satirical purposes. But over 90% of the um, deep fake uh, imagery that is on the internet is non-consensual porn. Gosh. Um, so, it's, it's brutal. It's really, really brutal. I'm so sorry that you had to go through it. That, I mean, all the images of you, have, um, have you been uh, successful in removing all that now? Yeah, that's... I mean, the good thing is that they're, they're not, not there uh, anymore, but obviously um, you remember mm. uh, an image. That's, that's very much what I've wanted to express with the documentary. Um, and, to, and the important thing for me is to... If something's been done to you and it's, it's been out of your control in that way and without your permission, I think the temptation is to want to hide away mm. and to, you know, delete all of your social media and all that kind of thing. Um, I think it's very important to, to not do that, uh, to, to not be uh, ashamed or, or frightened and mm. to actually speak about it, to say to other people, if this were to happen to you, um, it, it's OK, it's not... It's not something yeah. you should Well be. done for you, speaking up about this, doing the documentary, which is my blonde... GF, standing for girlfriend, that's uh, available now for people to see. And the good news is that because of this change in the law, action can be taken in Absolutely. future over this. But thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Now, if you've been affected by any of the issues we've been discussing, don't forget you can always find advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines.